Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today we're going to talk about DirectX 12. It's all the rage these days. Everybody's interested in what it's going to bring to the table, what it's going to add to performance, and when Windows 10 will actually be released with DirectX 12 fully integrated. We don't know that answer yet, but we did get a few days time with uh, the new version of Windows 10 that has the full integration of DirectX 12, updated drivers from both AMD and NVIDIA that have DirectX 12 implementations, and the first iteration of FutureMark's latest feature test that's going to be added into their 3D Mark benchmark at the next iteration. This is actually just called simply the API overhead feature test. And the goal of the test is to uh, compare performance of different APIs, DirectX 11 single-threaded, DirectX 11 multi-threaded, Mantle and DirectX 12. Obviously Mantle will only run on compatible AMD graphics cards, uh, but we'll talk about that in a second. Now what's important to note, and FutureMark and Microsoft were both very adamant about when we were doing this story, is that these results should not really be used to compare the performance between GPUs. So the amount of draw calls per second we get out of a Radeon R9 290X should not necessarily be directly compared to the draw calls per second you get out of a GTX 980. Now of course, being the hardware reviewers that we are and the ones that want to compare numbers like this, we'll look at the numbers, but keep in mind in the back of your head that these are not like performance metrics. Uh, the test itself is actually, it's fairly straightforward, it's interesting, but it's not very uh, graphically flashy. It renders at 1280 by 720. Obviously it's trying to limit the GPU as a bottleneck. It's basically trying to take it out as completely as possible from, uh, from being the influencer of performance, the primary influencer of performance. But what the goal of DirectX 12 and what Mantle was is to increase efficiency on the processor side so that more cores can be utilized to uh, ask for more draw calls from the GPU, thus removing that bottleneck of the CPU and the API whenever possible. The test itself, as I said, renders at a low resolution, and how it works is it basically is drawing something that looks a little bit like a cityscape, but is, is kind of just kind of generic geometry with no po post-processing, not a lot of shader effects going on here. And the result is, or, or how the test actually works is it starts at a low draw calls per second count or draw calls per frame and it slowly increases that amount until the frame rate of the system is under 30 frames per second and as soon as it drops below 30 frames per second it measures how many draw calls per frame it gets for about three seconds and you get a total metric of draw calls per second so it measures draw calls per frame in the benchmark itself but we're reporting draw calls per second and we actually see some pretty interesting results. For example, on uh, the GTX 980, we tested a 980 and a 290X as our primary kind of first looks here. And uh, compared to DirectX 11, even in its multi-threaded uh, iteration, you're looking at a maximum of 15.6 million draw calls per second on the 980 versus what you got with DirectX 11 of 2.62 million draw calls per second. Now that's obviously a huge difference. We're talking about, uh, you know, more than an order, almost an order of magnitude difference. We're talking about, you know, six, seven times as much uh, compute capability, or rather draw call capability from this. And that's even a step up if you look at the DirectX 11 single threaded results as well. Now, if you go to PCPro.com, we also have a breakdown of, we kind of, we were running on an eight core uh, uh, Haswell E platform with an X99 chipset, and we even did some testing with eight cores, eight cores if we turn hyper-threading off, and then six cores, four cores, two cores, and one core. And you can see that uh, it does kind of eventually start to scale down once we get uh, below six cores. So you can see kind of where that performance trade-off is going to be. But clearly, from that first result, DirectX 12 is going to offer significant more um, draw calls or just API efficiency for the GPUs to take advantage of than DirectX 11 ever could, right? So uh, if we look at the R9 290X results, they're actually a little bit higher. Under DirectX 12, we kind of peak at 19.1 million draw calls per second under DirectX 12. Compare that to just over 1 million, 1.05 million draw calls under DirectX 11 multi-threaded. So another, again, we're talking about 18 or 19 times the performance that you get with the new API. Interestingly, the Mantle results are a little bit ahead of DX12, which maybe makes a little bit of sense considering the API was written specifically for AMD GPUs in mind, whereas DirectX 12 has to be agnostic and you know written for AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA GPUs across the board. So we actually saw just over 20 million draw calls per second there. 
So that's kind of where we're at. Now you could look at this and say, well, the NVIDIA GPU only got 15.6 and the AMD GPU got up to 19 million draw calls per second under DirectX 12. So does that mean the AMD 290X is actually faster than the GTX 980? And that's definitely not the case, right? There's, some, there's something to be said about uh, maybe driver efficiency today, uh, but there's a lot of time left between now and Windows 10 full release, DirectX 12 games release. Uh, and another interesting point came up when we started to look at the GTX 980 compared to the GTX 960. Now these GPUs in terms of in-game performance are drastically different, right? The 980 is gonna be much, much faster than the GTX 960. But as it turns out, if you take a 960, if you look at our results, uh, under DirectX 12, a 960 at its stock configuration gets about 9.7 million draw calls per second. And the 980 again is 15.6. But if you overclock that GTX 960 to about 1500 to 1600 megahertz on the GPU core clock and then increase that memory speed up to about two, uh, the two gigahertz instead of uh, 1.7 gigahertz or so, it basically just overclock as you would normally do for a, a GPU at this point, you actually almost match the draw call per second capability of that entire system. The GTX 960 OC is almost as many draw calls per second as the GTX 980. Now, clearly we don't assume that when DirectX 12 games come out, that the GTX 980 and the GTX 960 will actually have the same performance, right? So this kind of, again, is kind of going to the point of don't compare GPU to GPU, compare API to API on the same system, right? And, and keep in mind that that means GPU and CPU, those are all going to change things drastically uh, depending on what your platform uh, configuration is. And we saw the same thing uh, when we looked at the R9 290X compared to the R9 285, where the R9 285 actually had performance very, very close to that of the R9 290X in terms of draw calls per second but that is not really equating to real world game performance when it comes down to it. And finally, we also did, of course, we had to throw uh, a little bit of love to the APUs in there. This is one of those areas that we think we'll see even more potential benefit to DX12. And if you look at our testing on an A10 7850K, the DirectX 11 single threaded results are just about 500,000, just over 500,000 draw calls per second. Whereas with DirectX 12 and Mantle, we're at 4.5 million draw calls per second. Again, another seven to eight X improvement in capability for the API there. So that's just a quick look at our first results with the new 3D Mark DirectX 12 uh, testing capability. And we know they have plans for a full DirectX 12 benchmark that will be coming out probably in line with the Windows uh, 10 full release. And we plan on doing more testing even with this API overhead test to really evaluate what different CPU platforms can do and what GPU dif uh, different GPU platforms offer. Um, but as I said, it will be a very interesting kind of discussion to see how all of that scales, even though both FutureMark and Microsoft and our own results point to it not being a real good component to component test, more of an API to API test. So again, check out the full review over at PCPro.com. We go into more details on the core breakdown. We have some more details on what the actual benchmark itself is doing. If you're interested in that technical, uh, technical information and uh, stay tuned here, we'll have more information soon, I'm sure. Thanks.